Hi. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, thank you so much for your film. Um, so I'll start by just asking for, um, yeah, get some context into the original film and why you chose to, to use this as your source material. Thank you for the question and thank you uh, for having for having watched the film. Um, so, for the, to answer that question, I'll ha um, I'll have to um, to say something about the genealogy of the film. Now, it was in the in the context of a class I gave with my students, and the idea was now if we would have to um, show that film to an audience, the original film by Hazards, which is a film of 58, a very colonial racist film full of, uh, full of stereotypes, uh, also a wrong film th um, uh, art theory, um, and many problems. Uh, it was also a colonial propaganda film at the time. Um, so if we were to show the film, what would we have to do? Um, and after long discussions, we chose to completely change the film. We could not uh, repeat, even not with a critical voiceover or something, repeat the, um, the problematic images with then a reflection, uh, thinking it would be okay just that a reflection would suffice or, or commentary would suffice. No, we would have to change the film, and then we encountered this this this, this idea by Spivak, Gertrude Spivak, um, affirmative sabotage, which is, you know, you disrupt the system from within. You um, you go into the archive, in the colonial archive, um, and you make a counter archive by embracing the archive and by changing it from from within. So we took um, some images and we completely changed it. Another voiceover, another music, and so on but with the elements that were already available at the time that colonial propaganda filmmaker made the film, which is 85, all these elements were already available. So it's, it became the film he could have made rather than uh, a new film uh, showing how much you know, post-colonial progress uh, we made. No, at that time, there were completely valid uh, um, uh, counter uh, voices, um, and many, many, many of them. I mean, Césaire is only one of them. You had the entire Pan-African conferences, you had literature, also in filmmaking, you had Marquette, René, Vautier, and so on and so on. So um, the original film I chose for the original film was rather an accident. It's an accident in, you know, in, in the class of teaching, uh, uh, it was not deliberately now we have to attack that movie. It could have been another movie. Yeah. Thank you. And I was interested as well into how you how you change the name um, from under the black mask to under the white mask. And the kind of it kind of made me think about this kind of move to think about colonialism as not black history but white history mm -hmm. or, or shift the shift the kind of focus. Um, in that way. So I wondered if you could respond to that. Yes, at first sight, it's a simple return the dichotomy. And so maybe problematic because it maintains the dichotomy, which is a colonial dichotomy, uh, actually. Uh, and so the challenge is really to tra transgress that dichotomy. But on the other hand, uh, we maintained the idea of under the white mask because that is what Césaire does. That is what the text by Aimé Césaire, he really shows that colonialism is an internal colonialism. The, the West colonizes itself. It makes itself into an, a non-human, an animal, and so on and so on. Uh, he relates it to fascism. He, I think he was one of the first uh, authors to relate colonialism with fascism, which is now but more and more, actually. Uh, I mean, the last film by Raoul Peck is about that, uh, specifically. Um, so it is, re we reveal the film, I mean, not me, it's really Césaire, actually, reveals um, that, that mask of Europe. He, he shows what Europe is really like. Uh, 
is indefensible, is indefendable, like he says. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. So that is why we maintained the dichotomy also, so we could play a little bit with the original, with the original film. Yeah, yeah. It's maybe in the title itself an act of, of sub affirmative sabotage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And kind of linked as well, there's a question from the audience, which is, um, how did you come across the voiceover actor and develop the script? And, and I guess it's the, it's, it's the, the translation of the script um, oh, with yeah. the actor. Yes, so when we were watching the film, we thought of taking the element, deconstructing it, and then thinking, you know, these, these, these statues, these artifacts, which were silenced mm -hmm. and recycled in other rituals, uh, colonial rituals and so on, objectified silence and, and aestheticized and so on. So what would they say? Uh, then we chose the text of Césaire. Um, but then we thought of translating it into Lingala. Uh, why? I mean, that's more a personal choice because uh, I'm Belgian and Belgium is related to Congo and Lingala is, is one of the most important languages of, of, of Lingala. Also because I know a little bit of Lingala, but I asked the professional translator to translate for the first time this text in Lingala to make it also accessible. Film makes it accessible. The film will also be showed, shown in, in, in the Congo Biennial uh, in September um, and other places in, in Congo. So, but that text, which is a, you know, a fundamental text, to make it available in Lingala is also uh, is also very special. It's also an act. So I asked a translator, and Maravilla Munto uh, also helped with the professional translator to make it a little bit more smooth. Um, and um, it speaks. I think it speaks uh, rather than impose a colonial language, French or or, or, or English or, or whatsoever, um, which you know, is, is a debate, a separate debate, actually, to retranslate it into, into Lingala, which is an, um, an interesting exercise of translation, of course, uh, because you don't share all the semantics. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but I don't know Lingala enough to really n understand the subtlety of, of what meaning has been changed into in into Lingala, I would have to to research that more uh, fr from 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 the starting from the film. Actually, that would be interesting. Yeah, and to do an audience research in in Congo to see what uh, how 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 Césaire's text is reinterpreted, uh, and reactualized maybe, uh, given the the, the neo colonial situation uh, and 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 the new also the the new rise of of, of fascism also right. Yeah. Absolutely. So another question from the audience, um, how and why did you choose that particular track by Samura for the film? Okay, yeah, yeah. Good question. Well, first of all, because I'm, I'm a fan of, of, of the music, but um, secondly, I was looking for music that was already available, available uh, in, in, in 58, the, the moment when Hazard made the film. So he could have, he could have used that music. Huh? But also you know, the title is Ethiopia and it taps into the all Pan-African ideology. Uh, and in the case of Sandra, it's the idea of symbolic return through the arts, uh, through music, right? Um, and this is also something, it's another layer in the film um, because I sometimes see these, um, these, these masks, uh, uh, artifacts as metaphoric for a certain diaspora uh, in, in Belgium specifically, who, uh, and I made another film about that, who uh, through, through arts um, take up a turn in, 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 in history. Um, so it's speaking back to to the to the history. Yeah, I'm I'm a bit vague and abstract now, but the idea is really these different things because I'm fan because it's available because of the Pan African relation uh, and the idea of return, uh, the Afrofuturism as 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 as, as you call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I had a question as well. Um, kind of seeing the film described as this 
way of making these objects into subjects. Um, and I think that's quite an interesting um, perspective. I'm personally interested in object ontology as it relates specifically to, to African peoples. And I think the way that you, you almost use the footage as if it's animated, they're kind of um, speaking and becoming, uh, yeah, yeah, subjects um, as opposed to objects. I wondered if you could just respond to that as well. Yeah. Your question makes me think about what Césaire says, colonisation, c'est chosification, colonialism is objectification, right? And that is precisely what the film, the initial film by Hazards did. Um, so the artefacts were taken from a cultural uh, context, they were reduced to its modality of exhibition as an object, aestheticized maybe. So this objectification is also symbolic or metaphoric for, 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 for coloniality as a whole, um, including bodies, right? And um, the, the challenge really was um, to make this into a subject, and that is something that cinema can do. I mean, I believe it was difficult because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, and according to who comments on the film, Sometimes it remains a bit too much objectified. And then I tried some, some tricks, it didn't work and so on. But the idea, and I, we, we tried to do it with the gaze. So only select these moments in which the mask has a, a, a direct visual relation or gazes back at the spectator. And that is a trick that maybe hmm, gives some subjectivity into a mask that has been formally sub, you know, objectified and to make them subject subjects, uh, um, which might also be just a projection, another, another projection, right? Another putting these masks in another context, but that is maybe the only thing we can do um, is to put them in a new ritual context, in a new cultural context uh, in which they have a political meaning a disruptive meaning, a meaning which can be um, create a dissensus, so reattribute the senses to those who has been have been silenced, and, and a discourse which has which has been silenced. I mean, Césaire's discourse is from fifty eight is as relevant now uh, as, as as it was then. It means that we really have to to maybe start uh, listening to the to, to that discourse. So the subjectification is also maybe the antidote to the chosification, to the objectification, which is um, which is one of the fundamental problems of, 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 of coloniality. So it's the first things to start with, I think, um, if you go into the archive to subjectify what has been objectified. Right? Mm. It is, uh, I'm, 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 I'm really tributary to other filmmakers such as John Acompra uh, and, and, and others who have been working all their lives to, do, to, to try to do that uh, uh, in, my, in, my, in my understanding, yes. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's an interesting point. And also, as you were speaking, I was thinking about the kind of the way that the exhibition of these materials often, it moves from a space where that, that object was a subject or, or it had some kind of a, you know, ritual significance or, or a life within it um, and then removed into an exhibition situation where it becomes an object and then kind of recast. Um, I think that's a really interesting perspective. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's maybe, it relates to the, you know, the, the film is part of, this, of the section or the, the series, which is um, a little magic against uh, oppression, right? Huh? Yeah. Maybe that is the magic. Mm -hmm. uh, is 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 the thing that cinema can contribute um, nowadays. It can also be a, a very negative effect, of course. Uh, but uh, we 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 try to do it positively in in a sense uh, to do that little magic uh, through film and to make these objects into a ritual we can re reinvent. Uh, and I'm speaking here as an ambiguous figure, of course, because I'm, 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 I have the colonial legacy, uh, but I also work with, with, with people from Congolese descent and Congolese themselves. Um, so I try to actually surpass that dichotomy by making films. Yeah, the initial dichotomy of which I uh, 
spoke in the, in the beginning, you know. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your film and, and for this conversation. It's been wonderful to talk to you. And thank you, everyone, for coming here and, and at home for tuning in. Thank, thank you, you so for much. watching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs>